What's going on, Spatians? Today, we're gonna to be talking about the trigger component in the Spatial Creator Toolkit. The trigger component lets you set different triggers, of course, in your scene to allow certain things to happen based on what the avatar or avatars do in the space. For example, you can walk into a room and have a sound play, or as you approach a door, you can trigger an animation for that door to open. Now let's jump in, and I'm gonna show you how to get started. Okay, so we're here in Unity, and we're gonna set up uh, two different triggers that I'm gonna walk you through right now. So first is how to add a trigger to the scene. So I'm just going to go over to my scene hierarchy, right click, go to spatial, and then add a trigger event. Now what that's gonna do is add this lightning bolt icon here and a sphere collider to our scene that you can see right here. So I can scale this up. And when I do, you see this green uh, sphere outline. So this is our trigger area. So whenever an avatar walks into this uh, sphere, that's when it's gonna trip the trigger and we can have it do something uh, when it does that. So we give you this sphere by default, but uh, shortly I'm gonna show you how you can add a trigger component to any size collider uh, or area. So looking at in our trigger event component here to the right side, uh, there's two different things to pay attention to. Uh, the on enter event and the on exit event. So on the on enter event, we're basically listening for the local avatar or the user, the person going through the experience, when they enter the collider, we're gonna have something happen. And then on exit, when they leave the collider, you can also trigger something to happen as well. And then if you wanted to have these events synced, which basically means when this event happens, everyone else in the space can see it at the same time. So if I walk into this trigger and it plays a sound, everyone will be able to hear that sound um, if it's synced. If it's not synced, that means only that person will hear or see uh, that event that happens. So in each event, we can have a Unity event, uh, which is specific to Unity uh, types of actions that happen in the space. I'll show you what that means in a second. We can have an animator event, so we can start or play animations tied to moving or animated objects in the space if you have an animator tied to your objects in the scene. And then a quest event. So this is spatial quests, which we'll get into in future videos, which allow you to basically guide users and uh, explorers through a space and have them do certain tasks um, or gain progress through certain actions in the space. But we'll get into quests in a future video. So right now, we're just gonna do something really, really simple. We're just gonna change the color of a cube when someone enters into this collider area. So I'm just gonna move the sphere collider here, the trigger right here near our entrance point. I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna add a cube tar scene. So I'm just gonna right click 3D object cube. Then this placed this cube here in our scene. I'm just gonna move it to somewhere that's visible. There we go. Right there. And just make sure that our trigger event is in front of it and our entrance point doesn't collide with that so we don't start the scene right in the trigger event collider. And we're gonna have two states for this, uh, uh, this cube. So I'm just gonna start it off uh, red. So I'm gonna go into materials and just drag the red material on the object. And now what I want to happen is when someone walks into the trigger, it's gonna change the cube green. And when they leave it, it's gonna change it back to red. So back here on our trigger event, if I go into the unity event on enter, I'm gonna click plus. And now I want something to happen to the cube when someone enters the trigger. So I'm going to go over to our cube, click and drag here to this area in the inspector. And now I can assign functions to, ha to happen to that cube on enter. So I'm going to click the drop down for function and go to mesh renderer since we're changing the mesh or the material on the cube. And now I can assign a material for it. So when someone enters 
that trigger area, I want it to glow, glow green. So I'm gonna take my glow green material that I've already set up here and drag it into that event. And then when someone exits and they leave the trigger area, I wanna change it back to red. So similar, similarly, on the uh, on exit event, I'm gonna take that cube, I'm gonna first actually hit the plus button, then take the cube, drag it here. And again, I wanna change the material, so I'm gonna to go to mesh render material, and then take the red material that I've already set up and drag it in here. So now when they walk into the collider, it'll turn green, and when they leave it, it'll turn back red. So now let's uh, make sure this scene is set up so we can test it in our sandbox. So I'm gonna to go to the settings icon in the top right and make sure our scene is set up. So I can click this drop down for create new environment. I'm gonna click create. We're gonna call this trigger test two since I've already had that set up. Uh, and then, like we mentioned in getting started, you can have multiple variants of the scene. In this case, we're just gonna have one variant. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna call this variant just trigger test. And the scene, we need to specify which scene we're testing. So in this case, we are testing the tutorial environment scene. That's what the scene is called. Uh, and we have already a thumbnail assigned to it. That's just any 2D image. So we're all set. So now if we go up to the top right and if you hover over test active scene, you can see in parentheses, it says builds the active scene, the one that is now in our active package uh, in the creator toolkit window uh, in tutorial environment. So it has that in parentheses. So we know we're gonna be testing that scene. So I'm gonna click test active package and continue. And that's gonna package up our scene and then upload it to the sandbox uh, in our web browser in Spatial. All right, and here we are in our sandbox and there you can see our red cube that we added. And now when I walk up towards it into that trigger area, it turns green, perfect. And when I exit, it turns red. And there we go, now we have our trigger working. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a second example of what you can do with triggering components. And this is gonna actually add two different actions that happen when we uh, use the trigger component. So I have here this giant piano, which is in the style of Big, the Tom Hanks movie, uh, so that our avatar or other people in the space, other avatars, other people, can play the piano just by running on top of it. So if you look closely here, you can see there are triggers on every single key on the keyboard uh, and the green highlighted boxes, which represent the colliders or the trigger areas um, that will trick the trigger and cause the action that happens. So let's look at one of these closely. So if I click down here, let's look at the A7 key, second to last key here. Inside each one, I have a trigger and I have an audio source. So if you look at the trigger, and I scroll down here, you can see I have this trigger event and that happens within this box collider. So I've added a box collider. I've made sure it's marked is trigger and I've re removed the mesh filter on it as well. So we can actually move through it and trip that trigger. Inside the trigger event, we have our on enter event. We have two things that happen. We play an audio source and then we change the color of the key. And then on exit, when the player leaves or walks off that key, we want to stop the audio source because they've essentially stopped pressing that key. And we want to change the material back to the original material. So it looks like the key isn't being pressed anymore. So I have this set up on all the keys except this last one. So let's go set up a trigger on this last key. We'll start from scratch. So this is our B7 key. And I'm going to um, not use the right click and add trigger like we did in the first step. I'm actually just gonna add a cube first. And we'll start from there. So I'm gonna go to 3D object and then cube. Let's scale those down. Now I'm just gonna set this up so that it aligns with our key here. Let's scale it. So, and I want to position it above the cube so that way there's enough area here so I know 
that someone will actually enter this area and trigger uh, that key. So I'm just making sure it's aligned here. I'm gonna shrink that just a little bit. Perfect. Uh, and now we want to remove the mesh filter. So I'm just gonna go over to the mesh filter and click remove component. And then on the box collider, I want to make sure this is set to is trigger. And then I'm going to add a component here. So I'll click add component and then search for trigger, spatial trigger event. And now that added that lightning bolt there as well. So what we want to do is make sure, first of all, this event is synced. So that way everyone in the space can hear the sounds being played. Um, so you can have this kind of multiplayer musical experience. So when someone enters the space, we want to first play a sound. So I have on this key the audio file already brought in, the B7 audio file. So what I did was I right clicked on the key B7 and then added audio and audio source. And when I right click on something uh, to add an object to that thing, it's gonna add it as a child object to it automatically. So we have that audio source. And then within that audio source, we have an audio clip. So in this case, I have the uh, sound files for every single key on the keyboard, in this case, the B7 key. So if I click here and then click play, you can hear what that sound's gonna be. That's just the B7 note. Perfect. So I've assigned that B7 key by dragging it from my uh, project settings and into the audio clip. And now I wanna play that when someone goes into the trigger. So in here, in my cube, which I'm gonna rename trigger D7, down in my trigger event, my first Unity event is I wanna play this note. So I'm gonna click and drag the B7 audio here. And then under the function dropdown, choose video source and then play. Now what I also want to happen is I wanna make it look like the key is being pressed. I could do this with an animation, but in this case, just a material change uh, will suffice. And that way I get to you know, make it colorful too. So I added another Unity event, and I want to change specifically this key B7, and that's the, uh, the actual key object. So I'm gonna take this, drag it here, and just like we did before, we wanna to go to Mesh Renderer and then Material. And then here in my materials, I have a set of colors. So I'm going to change this to yellow. So if I come down here, I'm actually gonna like move, move that. I can click and drag and assign the material. So now when someone enters, it's going to play the sound and change the color. But I also wanna make sure that when someone steps off the key, we stop playing the audio we're not gonna pause it, we're gonna stop it. Uh, and then we also change the color back. So down on, on exit, make sure that's synced. And then we're going to take the audio again here. We're gonna go to audio source and then stop. And then add another one again for material on the key. Drag that in here. And we're going to, I'm gonna move this out of the way again. Go to Mesh Render Material. And the name of the material, the original material for the key is called Solid Glass. So I'm gonna assign that in there. All right, so now let's test that out. We should have a fully functioning keyboard uh, across all the different keys. So I'm gonna test this scene and continue. And this will open in our sandbox. All right, now that our sandbox is loaded, we can see that the piano is there, just that we loaded in. And if I go over to it, we can now play our keyboard. Just by walking on it. So you can see every time I walk on a key, I'm actually, every time I walk on a key, I'm actually walking through those triggers. And it's triggering the material change on and off, and the audio change on and off.